All right, folks, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at this device by Finirsi, it's the DSO TC2. It is a uh, dual function utility that you can use at your lab bench or your ham shack where it has an oscilloscope function as well as a component tester. So uh, we're gonna take a look at both, test some components, uh, hook this up to a signal generator and see what it does. So stay tuned. All right, so before we bust this box open, I did want to say that I was contacted by my friend over at uh, Bob Love, who is in partnership with Finirsi. And uh, he asked if I would do a video review of this particular product. And of course I said, yes, I like doing video reviews and I like test equipment. So they sent this over uh, free of charge in exchange for this video review. I did want to mention this as a DSO, um, which is a digital storage oscilloscope dash TC2 is the model number. Uh, there is a device called a TC1, which is a component tester that does not include the oscilloscope. I'll include links below where you can pick this up and um, check out further details on the stats. On the box, a lot of this uh, writing on the back is in a foreign language. I think it says subscribe to the Smoke and Ape channel, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, let's get, uh, let's get in here and see what's doing. So it looks like we have some alligator clips uh, to MCX, I believe is this connector, which is cool. Um, then we have some of these, uh, this one looks like it might need to be some repair work on a couple of these, but uh, these are just little hooks, uh, little probes that you can use. And uh, they have DuPont pins here. So what's handy about these things is that you can plug them in line with a circuit on a breadboard and then connect to your oscilloscope and, uh, and get readings. And it looks like it comes with a USB-C cable for charging the device. Oh boy, it comes with a bunch of stuff. It comes with a instruction or user manual. Um, I would suggest everybody read that and familiarize yourself with how the equipment works. I have no idea. Oh, here it is. It's a warning. And it tells you uh, what you should be careful about and inspection notice. Let's take a look at this device. This is much smaller than I expected it would be. Let's go ahead and get this off of here. I hate this stuff. Um, it's actually really tiny. And here's your component tester. And we'll, we'll run through this. You can put your components in here, lock them in place, power on menu. Um, here's a Chevron that allows you to make different selections or functions here. Taking a look at the top of it, you can see these MCX connectors. Um, pulse width modulation. So I imagine this is an output signal. Here's your oscilloscope plug. And this is in zero to 16 volts. I have no idea what that is or what it does. Um, and then here's your charging port on the bottom. Oh, look at this. And it has a handy stand there. Actually, it's a pretty nice angle for that stand. I kind of like it. I, I, uh, I don't know what to think. It's kind of small. Let's get it hooked up and, and do some testing. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, you can get this with a oscilloscope probe. Mine did not come with a probe. I think it's an option for the kit. Um, so we just have this probe from a different oscilloscope that we have here at the Smoke and Ape House. And then I ordered these connectors. This is a BNC connector. And then I can just go ahead and plug that in. You heard it, you heard it click probably. And connect. This isn't the most sturdy or solid connection but then I can go ahead and I can connect my, um, my oscilloscope probe. So you see how easy this is. Actually, what I'm going to do is this. And that makes that a little bit easier. That does put some strain or some stress here that I'm not exactly happy with, but um, it should work. Let's get this thing powered up and, uh, and take a look at it. But it's asking me two different things. It's saying, do I want to do a MOS test? And I think it's for MOSFET test um, or the oscilloscope. And you can pick either one. So let's just go with the oscilloscope. And then here's our oscilloscope window. I'm going to get a different camera set up so we can zoom in on this window just a little bit better and uh, see what we can do. Okay, so here we have the O1 HDS 2102S. Uh, it's a little device. It's a signal generator, oscilloscope, multimeter that uh, we like to play around with on the channel. Let me turn this back on and we are going to do some messing with the oscilloscope. And then I just have a BNC cable running from one device to the other. Uh, I'm going to turn this on and here we go. We can, we can see our, 
our waveform, it is 100 kilohertz uh, sine wave with one volt peak to peak. And uh, here we are looking at this. Let me see if there's any adjustments that we can make. Um, I really am completely unsure how this uh, works. There we go. I hit the auto button and that went ahead and did that. Um, you can see like our voltage peak to peak here is reading at uh, 0 0.9. Over here, it's saying it's 0 0.1. Let me see if I can grab a quick stylus or a pointer. <clears throat> We're just going to use the pen. So here you can see the the uh, voltage peak to peak and here you can see the frequency. Let's go back over here and change our sine wave. So this is supposed to be a, uh, a square wave. And let's see if we can auto that. Oh, it looks like it said it went to a calibration setting. Let's see what that does. I guess it calibrates itself. And there's auto. So that is not the best looking signal, but it could be because our frequency is uh, too high. I believe the limitation on this device is 200, um, 200 kilohertz. Let's see what other waveforms we can take a look at. So here would be a ramp. This would be a single pulse. This is exponential rise. It looks like we're getting some, some bouncing around on there. And here we are back to sign. Let's take so that would be 200 kilohertz. That would be 300 kilohertz. 400 kilohertz. And it looks like it is, um, it looks like it's trying to read it. Let's grab the manual and take a look and see what the uh, actual limitation is on this device. So here, if you take a look at it, it says our analog bandwidth is one to 200 kilohertz. Um, here where you can see we're at 400 and it is reading it somewhat. You can see that the voltage peak to peak is saying uh, half a volt. We're pushing out a volt, but uh, that's not a problem. We're not going to hold that against it. So, I mean, it looks like you have this nice little functional oscilloscope uh, that you can play around with. To me, the interesting part of this device is actually going to be this component tester. And I'm typically not a big fan of these component testers when they're connected to things like a multimeter. But uh, in this case, this looks pretty intriguing. So let's go ahead and power all this stuff off and we'll come back and take a look at that. Okay, I was playing, okay, I was playing around with this thing. And one of the things I noticed is that when I boot up and I go into the MOSFET testing, I can hit this menu button and I get some different stuff. So here we have settings, like you can change your startup logo, your language, um, your time for your time off is either one minute or none. You can adjust your volume or your backlight, but then across the top you have function, and then you have explain and you have an about. So I can go over to function and there's different things here and I should probably read the, the manual. So I don't know if this is like, if you wanted to do a continuity test, you have to select this and then you can go ahead and do it. But I saw this PWM or pulse width modulation output. And we kind of talked a little bit about that when we saw the, um, the jack on the top of it. So right now it's set for 50% duty cycle and it is off. So if I hit okay, then it turns on. So that got me to wondering, let's go ahead and uh, plug this in. And now we're gonna have to go over to our oscilloscope. Come on. And then we'll go into channel one. And let's turn this baby on and see if we can see the signal that it's putting out. I want to go to mode. And let's see what's going on. Something's going on here. It's not reading it. There we go. Figured it out. We didn't have it officially marked on. So there you can see that. This could be pretty handy in testing certain things. Um, probably something I'm not going to use because I have a couple of uh, arbitrary waveform generators. But this is... Uh, like the one we saw earlier on the O1, one but this is actually uh, pretty cool that it comes with that capability in case you need it. And then I would imagine you could feed this into itself and uh, you could read that through a circuit if, um, if necessary. Um, cool. Let's go ahead. We're going to see if we can figure out how to turn this thing off. I think we just did. Yeah. Okay. After some fiddling around, I was able to get this over here on this auto cal, which I'm assuming is an auto calibrate, uh, setting. And so what I want to do is I just want to hit okay. And that highlights that start. And I'm going to hit okay again. And now it's telling me to please connect the probe. So I don't know what any of this means, but let's just go ahead and probe up. And, uh, we've done that. 
I don't know what else uh, what else it wants me to connect connect here. I suppose I should read the uh, read the manual. Let me consult the documentation. Well, this is a little bit of a party pooper, but it says here for the AutoCal, insert the three pin short circuit wire into the one, two, three jack of the test socket, press OK. So that would be the one, two, three here, and I would press OK, but I, I don't I don't know what they mean by the three pin. I, I don't have one. I don't know what they mean by three pin um, short circuit wire. So it looks like it looks like party over. We're not going to we're not going to do this. OK, so we are in the testing configuration or setting here, and I'm not sure what you can and can't test. I'm sure the instruction manual has a list of parts that you can test. But um, let's go ahead and let's just start with an LED that we just happen to have here. Um, so I'm just going to jam it in and we are in one and three. Let me go ahead and lock that. And I think I just hit this button to test. So in here, it's telling me that my forward voltage is 1.9 volts. Um, and it is a diode and it's connected to one and three. So that was pretty cool. Let's see if we can test this again. And you can see when it is testing the diode light up. That's, that's kind of neat. Let's take that one out and let's see if, uh, if we can do a yellow one. So you can see 1.96 forward voltage. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, here we have a big old capacitor and I'm not sure what the, uh, what the value is on this thing, but, uh, this is where I think this device is going to shine. It's going to become pretty handy for me is that I'll be able to just stick stuff in here and, uh, and test it out and see what happens and um here we go it's a 8130 picofarad capacitor coolness let's go ahead and take that out and i don't know if it uh will do resistors or not but there's only um there's only one way to find out and so let's go ahead and plug this one in actually let's see what happens when we do that so we're in one and two, um, and the two is in a different spot. And it came back resistor, uh, 2,395 ohms. So um, that's cool. Let's see what other components we have around here. Let's see if we can confuse it at all. Now, I would not expect it to be able to test something like this, which is a crystal. <laughs> but, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try it anyway. Now, if it gets this, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be amazed. Yeah, a damage your unknown part. I, I, I kind of expected that. Um, the other thing that we have here is an inductor. Now, it's probably going to see this inductor as a capacitor. Um, I'm sorry, as a resistor. I'm not going to get too upset here, but we'll find out. Yeah, shown as a resistor. I figured I figured that to be the case. Um, I do have an induction uh, resistance. They call it an LC meter um, that you can that uh, we use for those kind of things here. Let's see, and we also have one of these babies. These are some uh, some components that I bought for a project that I'm working on, and they're two N three nine zero six transistors. And let's go ahead and plug one of these babies in and, uh, and see what we can figure out. Now, I've got to kind of spread the legs on this thing a little bit. And I'm not sure if it matters too much for polarity. I'm going to say no, it doesn't. Let's get it in there and do some testing. So it shows you this PMP uh, transistor, and here's all your informations that go along with that. Um, and here you can see the direction of the flow. That's a... Uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty handy because every now and then I come across uh, one of these in a parts bucket and I have no idea what it does. And I think that uh, the last component that I wanted to test is around here somewhere. Here it is. And uh, these are some, some diodes that I have 1N34A, 10 pieces. And uh, we picked these up for a project that we were working on and we used a couple of them. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and get one of these in here.
and it's showing us our diode and there's some of the values. So this is pretty cool. Um, I know that we just really scratched the surface and didn't do a whole lot with this thing. Uh, I'm more interested in it as a component tester than it is than I am as an oscilloscope. Um, I do want to say thanks to Fenirsi and to uh, and to CC for sending this out to me. I appreciate that, and uh, I'm sure you'll see this make its uh, way into future videos as a test device. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Appreciate it.